Lord God, Father, with all our getting to get understanding that we are changed on the inside out. Beyond the storm, beyond the trial. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our, our sit up spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I'm Tony Burke Brown, your spiritual impact trainer. We come on here Monday through Friday with a spiritual fitness class, meaning that we are doing a Bible study. We are getting the word. We are using these principles and applying them because the Bible tells us that we are to exercise godliness. It's profitable in all things in this life and a life to come, according to 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. And so we come on here and we get this word. And I so I just welcome you to our spiritual fitness class. If this is your first time joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. Get your pen, paper, highlighter in your Bible, because as I go to scriptures or reference them, I encourage you write them down, take notes so that you can go back and do your own study. If you're already a part of the sit-ups, welcome back. You already know what to do. So we are coming together today to continue our study in first John. We're going into chapter five. Now we've done the first four chapters over the last, I don't know, week and a half or so. And so now we're in chapter five, beginning in verse one. I encourage you gather your materials together. Um, today we are talking about being an overcomer. Like we're just going through probably the first five verses of scripture. And so um, I encourage you, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe if you've not subscribed to my channel. And then there's a bell. When you click that bell, you'll receive notifications when I upload these videos during the week. Also Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have word and prayer on Facebook Live and Instagram Live. Check out that information below so you can join us if you've not already. But right now we're going into the word of God. So turn your Bibles to 1 John chapter 5. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just worship and praise you today. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for giving us spiritual nourishment, causing us to grow, change, and to progress. That your word is impacting us from the inside out, changing us, transforming us, and conforming us in to the image of your son. And so, Father, we yield ourselves to you that we can be vessels and instruments that then go forth and impact those around us. So have your way. We pray your Holy Spirit will be our teacher, that you administer to us individually and collectively, that in everything and in all things, you will be glorified, you will be lifted up, and your purposes will be filled, fulfilled in us, through us, and for us. In Jesus' name, amen. To God be the glory. We are in chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. And it begins by stating, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Everyone that loveth him that begot, loveth him also that is begotten of him. So in other words, everybody who believes that Jesus Christ is, uh, has become a child of God, everyone that believes Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. So when we believe Jesus, we believe that he's the son of God. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. That's how we are adopted into the family through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the finished work on the cross so we can be forgiven of our sins, cleansed of our sins, abide in Christ, he and us. That is our righteousness. Righteousness is right standing with God. We have no righteousness in and of ourselves. We can never get right with God by ourselves because we are guilty of sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But through Jesus Christ and the shed blood on the cross and our faith in him, right, we can be forgiven and we're justified. It's, it's like just as if we had not done it. We are cleansed of all unrighteousness. We are made new in Christ Jesus. So it says everyone who believes in Jesus Christ, believes in Jesus Christ or that he is the Christ, has become a child of God. And everyone who loves the father loves his children too. Now we've been talking about love, but right now, you know, we're kind of, I don't know, it kind of rolls over into chapter five and then we go into some other um, principles here, but it kind of rolls over from chapter four into chapter five, reminding us that if, um, I'm sorry, that if we um, are children of God and we love the father, then we also love the children his children. It's like we're a family. You look at your brothers and sisters in Christ, literally as brothers and sisters, literally we are a family. And those that belong to him, we love one another. Jesus prayed that we would be one, even as he and the father are one. That prayer is in the book of the gospel of John 17. If you've never read it, 
read that chapter. Jesus is praying. It's a three-part prayer. Part of it is about him. Part of it is about those that are following him at that time. Part of it is about us who will follow later. So if you've not yet checked that out, go and check out. Literally, that is the Lord's prayer. He is praying to the Father. But then we go into verse two of first John chapter five. It says, by this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. So we know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. So we, as we are loving others, loving God, keeping God's commandments, this, this is everything right here in this verse of scripture. This is, excuse me, this is everything, right? That when we are walking with God, when we are obeying his commands, we're showing that we love him. The Bible says, if we love him, we'll obey him. And then if we love him, we love his children. So the greatest commands is love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbors yourself. We covered this in the last session. So when we're loving God, loving others, and we're obeying God's commands, this is the family right here. This is what is the greatest thing ever. This is being a child of God. This is him being our father. This is everything. So in verse three, it says, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. They're not burdensome. It's not hard to follow God's commands. We have already read that he's given us his spirit and the Holy Spirit empowers us, enables us, teaches us, guides us, comforts us, reminds us of the word, gives us gifts, right? So we have the power that raised Christ from the dead. The scripture says that the, this is the same power that raised Christ from the dead. The spirit of God living in us. So we are made alive, excuse me, alive in Christ Jesus through the spirit of God, by the power of the word, through the power of the blood of Jesus, we are made alive in Christ, led by the spirit, filled with the spirit of God, Jesus in us, us in Christ, we abide in God, dwelling in him and he in us. This is everything right here. So we keep his commandments. His commandments are not burdensome. They're not difficult. They're not grievous. Whatever God has called us to do and to be, he has given us everything we need to do it. The Bible says he's given us every spiritual blessing. The Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. He equips us. He's given us armor. He's given us weapons. He has given us a measure of faith. He has given us his son, given us his Holy Spirit. He's empowered us. He's enabled us. He's given us his word to instruct us, to be a light, to be a lamp. He has equipped us. In fact, when we read in um, Timothy 3 16 and 17 right and it tells us about the the word of god the scriptures being god inspired right and it's good for correction instruction reproof it's it's good for in it in it equips us right it says um so that we are thoroughly equipped unto all good works unto the good works that god has called us to he has given us his word that his word instructs us is good for doctrine is good for reproof for correction for instruction that the man of God is thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So everything that we need, right, for the works that God has called us to, the things, the deeds, the assignments, the missions, the ministry, his word directs us in it. His word corrects us in it. His word guides us in it, right? And so now, this is everything in these first three verses to me, and we're able to follow God's commands. And so when we look at, hold on one second. Amen. We're going to look at verses four and five. Um, and I think I didn't say when we were looking at, Tim, when, I, when I referenced Timothy, write down 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Amen. 2 Timothy, because I think I just said Timothy. Um, so anyway, First John chapter five, verses four and five now says, for what for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. He who is, I'm sorry, who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God. So here it is right there. Amen. So let's look at this word overcome. Let's look at this. Hold on one second. We're going to look at the Greek word for this. Overcome. What does that even mean? 
when it says that, you know, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. His commandments are not grievous. But then it says whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. And then it says, who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believes that Jesus is the son of God. It's our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is the son of God. And it started off in this chapter saying, whoso believe that Jesus is the Christ. So if we believe that Jesus is the Christ, right, then we're born of God. We're God's children. But then it tells us in verse five, who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believes Jesus is the son of God. We have to believe he's the son of God. We have to believe that he is the Christ, that he is the Messiah, right? And so this is what makes us overcome the world. How do we overcome the world? Through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But what does it mean to overcome? This means, this word in the Greek is nikao, it's N-I-K-A-O. Again, N-I-K-A-O. Remember, this is a video. You can pause it at any time if you need uh, you know, more time to write anything down. Nikao. It means to conquer. It needs to, it means to prevail. It means be victorious. It means to subdue. It means to carry off the victory. And so this is implying, it says, to a battle. So think about it. Think about the battle, like really the word tells us in Ephesians chapter six, verses 10 through 18 about this spiritual warfare, really the spiritual battle that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, right? Tells us about putting on the whole armor of God, tells us about standing against the wiles of the devil, right? In all of these verses of scripture, we know that we have an enemy. We know that, you know, uh, that Satan is a real enemy, the demons, the demonic activity. Um, and we know that the devil blinds the minds of unbelievers so they can't see the light. We know that we are fighting a spiritual battle and we have to do it through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God, speaking the word, preaching the gospel to every creature, being led by the spirit of God, mortifying the deeds of the body. We're in a battle. So we're fighting against, right? Demonic activity, demons, the devil, standing against his trickery, his lies, his deception, right? But also against the world and against our flesh. The Bible tells us the spirit and the flesh, they're contrary one to another. There's a battle going on there every single day, right? And so, but when we obey God, when we love him, when we love others, when we're abiding in him, Hid with God in Christ, when we're abiding in the Son and He in us, right? We are overcomers through our faith, through walking this out and remaining in Christ and living for the one that died for us. The love walk is being perfected in us. God's love is being perfected in us. We're becoming like the Son. We are denying ourselves. We're looking at the interests of others. We are becoming victorious through our faith. We can overcome the world. It's ways. It's lies, the rudiments of this world, the darkness and unfruitful works of darkness of this world, because now we're walking in the light. We talked about that in 1 John chapter 1, right? Walking in the light, no longer walking in darkness, because if we say we have fellowship with him and we continue in darkness, the Bible lets us know we're lying, right? There's no truth in us. So when we begin to, to love God and love others, when we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is the Christ, that he is the son of God, when we're obeying God's commands, this right here is the power to overcome. We are walking in light and no longer in darkness. In fact, it's this light dispels darkness. Darkness is the absence of light. When we come in, we're lit, right? Because the Bible tells us, Jesus tells us in Matthew uh, chapter five, uh, verses 13 through 16, about us being the salt and the light, right? But when we look at this, it's telling us, you're the salt of the earth. This is Matthew 5, 13 through 16. You're the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savior, savor, not savior, savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out, to be trodden under the foot of men. So we're the salt of the earth, but we can't lose our flavor. We have to be a, 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 a that which is used to preserve, to bring life, right? And then it says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot 
be hid. Neither do men light a candle, put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So we are a light because we have the word dwelling in us. We have Christ living in us. He is the light of the world. When he lives through us, remember we talked about we no longer live for self, but we live for the one that died for us. So now our life is not our own. We were bought with the precious blood of Jesus. And so he's living in us and through us. We yield ourselves as instruments of righteousness unto God, according to Romans chapter six. So it's no longer us, but it's Christ living in us. It's the light living through us that is dispelling darkness in our life, in our surroundings. Those around us are able to see the light, right? And so we're overcoming. We're overcoming darkness because we got light in us. We're overcoming the lies of the devil because we got the truth in us. Jesus says in, in John 14 and 6, and write down every verse that I'm that I'm mentioning. John 14 and 6, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes to the Father but by me. So he's the truth. When we when we have Christ in us, when we believe on Jesus as the Christ and the Son of God, and we're living in him and he in us, and we're following the commands, we have the truth in us. Truth dispels and exposes lies, the lies of the devil. Jesus tells us in John chapter 8, that the devil is the father of lies. He's the originator of them. And so now we can see the power in these first five verses of scripture, right? If we love God, we love the children of God, we keep God's commands. This is family right here. You think of your household, right? You think of loving your parents. You think of, you know, children loving their parents and, and honoring them right? This shows us the family that is talked about. Look at Ephesians chapter six. Ephesians chapter six. You can connect all of God's word. Like it could just be, it just comes to you as you're going through it. And the more you know it, the more you understand it, the more you connect it and you see that it does not, you know, contradict itself, but it, it gives us visuals. It gives us you know, a way to look at the word of God so that we have illustrations of it, right? And so in Ephesians chapter six, beginning in verse one, we already talked about verses 10 through 18, talking about our spiritual battle, right? But in verse one, it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on earth. And so when we look at those verses and we see how a family is to be set up where children are honoring their parents, then it goes on and tells the fathers not to provoke the children to wrath. But we're, we're told in the word of God that we as parents are supposed to train our children up in the way they should go, that when they grow old, they shall not depart from it, right? So God trains us up in his word. He gives us his word that is God-breathed, that teaches us, that instructs us that guides us, that's a light to us, a lamp to us, right? And we can hide it in our heart that it dwells in us and brings light into our path. It's a light and a lamp unto our feet, right? Into our path so we can see where he's leading us, right? So when we obey him and his word, and that means that we love him because the word says, if we love him, we'll obey him. And if we love him, then we're gonna love his children. So it's a family and he's our father, right? And he never leaves us nor forsakes us, but he is purging us, according to John 15. In the first verses, Jesus is saying, I'm the vine, you're the branches. And he tells us about us bearing fruit. Those that don't will be cut off, but those that do, God purges and prunes us and removes anything that will prevent us from bearing more fruit. So as he's purging us, we're becoming more fruitful. We're becoming more beneficial to the kingdom. We're, we're glorifying God more. We're becoming lighter, right? So this here, this makes us overcome because then we the power of God is operating in us. The word of God is operating in us. The spirit of God is operating in us and it's overtaking us and our flesh is dying and the spirit is working in us and through us and we're becoming conformed into the image of God's son according to Romans 8 and 29. This is it, overcoming, being victorious. Remember um, in Romans chapter eight, we'll just look at that. 
in Romans chapter 8, the word tells us, Hold on a second. Oh, good grief. Verse 37. I just want to look at this one verse, but you need to read around it, right? But that's when it says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. There's that love again, showing his love for us. And through him, we are more than conquerors. And this word conquerors is one of the definitions that we just read for the word overcomer. So we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And God loved us and Jesus loved us and they show their love and they continue to love us because in this chapter of chapter eight in Romans, right? It tells us Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So I want you to read through uh, Romans chapter 8 um, on your own, verses 31 all the way to the end in verse 39, and see that nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And through this love, through, through this love, the one that loved us, we are more than conquerors. And when we love him back and we love his children and we obey his commands and we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is the son of God and he is the Christ, we overcome the things that used to, to control us, the things that used to overcome us, we now overcome it. We overcome evil with good, right? We are victorious, right? We are more than conquerors through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so now we are able to overcome and sin has no dominion over us because where we were once yielded as vessels and instruments of unrighteousness, right? Now we are yielding our members as instruments unto God, unto righteousness. So now we are submitting to God according to, um, uh, I got so much going on here. James chapter four, verse seven. Now I'm getting all like, let me make sure. Amen. But anyway, um, we submit ourselves therefore unto God and we resist the devil and he flees, right? Yes, uh, James chapter four, verse seven. So when we submit to God's authority and we obey his commands and we love him and we love his children and we are a household of faith and we're a family and we're one body and Christ is the head, we're all connected and we're edifying one another, encouraging one another so we can overcome together so that we are not tearing down one another, but we are edifying one another, building up one another, iron sharpening iron, moving in the purposes and the plans of God and we're able to obey his commands because they're not grievous, they're not burdensome because we've been empowered to do it. Listen, you're an overcomer through your faith. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Are you following him? Does he abide in you and you and him as he's divine and you're the branches? Then you should be producing fruit. You should be an overcomer. You should not be blending in with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather exposing it. The Bible tells us that in Ephesians chapter five, that we are not to, you know, uh, we're not to be a part of the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose it, rather reproof it. And so, so we are walking different. This is what sets us apart right here in these first verse, first five verses of scripture. Go back and meditate on those and the other verses that we um, reference. Go back and meditate on those and see, are you an overcomer? Do you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you doing the three things in verse three? Are you loving God? Are you uh, obeying his commands? Are you, I'm sorry, verse two. Uh, are you loving God's children, loving God and keeping his commandments? Verse two, are you doing that? Are you doing it? And in whatever area we're not obeying him and keeping his commandments, let's correct it. Whomever we've not been walking in love with, let's correct it. In whatever area of our life we have not been showing love to God, let's correct it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name and honor you and praise you, God. We thank you, Lord God, for pouring your word into us. Thank you for your son. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for empowering us and enabling us, giving us your truth. Thank you, Lord God, that your word gives life. That is spiritual nourishment. Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. So, Father, continue to pour into us that we can pour into others. We love you. We honor you. and We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Love you to life.
And I'll see you as we continue our study. We're going to pick up in verse six when we come back the next time. See you on our next sit-ups. It's time for sit-ups. All sit-ups. Spiritual impact training using prayers and scripture.